know it's a homily. <laughs> Advent is a season of anticipation, looking forward to a reality that is growing closer every day. That is anticipation. It's like Heinz ketchup gradually dripping out of the jar. Anticipation. Something growing closer every day. Not yet fully present, yet on the way in visible manner. Claude Steele recalls the day that he realized his skin was black. On the last day of his first grade year, he was walking home from school with other children with a whole summer in front of them. And that was the day he learned that African American children were only allowed to swim at the neighborhood pool on Wednesday afternoons between one and five. Today, Claude Steele is the provost of Columbia University in New York City. Brent Staples, when he was a student at the University of Chicago, noticed that when he was out walking by himself late in the afternoon, early in the evening, that as a young black man in that part of Chicago, people would cross the street when they saw him coming so they would not have to come close to him. He noticed that couples would clasp hands as they did pass him, or that parents would stop and reach around and speak with their young child in the stroller to make sure that they could be safe. What he learned was that over time, if he whistled classical music, it dissipated the chaos and the conflict and the angst. And so he found himself walking through that part of Chicago, whistling the ball, and became a smiling young black man to everyone who passed him. He became known as that young man knows so much classical music kind of guy. Today, Brent Staples is a reporter for the New York Times. Advent is a season of anticipation, looking forward to a reality that is growing closer every day, yet not fully present. During Advent, our desires and our visions are like candle flames piercing darkness, flickering, glowing light. We may not see clearly, but we can see. One of our desires, one of our visions is the peace of God growing closer, growing more visible, growing clear every day. It was this pathway of peace for which Isaiah cried out 2,500 years ago. Isaiah cried out for a pathway to the peace of God in the midst of a desolate wilderness. He wanted a pathway of peace that would transform what was into what might be. He could see it with a vision. He could desire it, but he couldn't make it fully become reality. John the baptizer shows up crying out in a wilderness seeing a vision, desiring the peace of God and calling people to repentance. Make straight the path. Prepare. Expect. Basically what he was saying was repent for the forgiveness of sin. It's another way of saying, go ahead, say I'm sorry. When you repent, when you confess, you say, I'm sorry. And when you repent or confess to God, you're simply saying to God what God already knows. Yes, I know. You did wrong. Yes, I know. You're sorry. The same thing that happened.
happens when you go to your friend or your loved one or your family member and you say, I'm sorry, and they say, I know, I'm sorry too. And it begins from there. The pathway of peace begins with repentance, confession, by saying, I'm sorry. And we are sorry. We're sorry for our personal sins and relationships and our failures in getting along. And we're also sorry for our sins and our failures as humanity causing violence to erupt because we ignore suppressed racial stereotypes that result in unnecessary deaths. Each of us is susceptible to the virus of conflict. Many wounds may not be our fault, but we become responsible if we allow the infection to fester. Some people allow their angst to erupt in angry destruction, and yet others try to close their ears to the noise of discord by escapism or shallow pursuits. During Advent, we look forward to a reality not yet fully present, even as we know it is closer and more clear every day. Yes, there are many religious wars today, but there is also more interfaith and interreligious initiatives taking place today than any other time in human history. More efforts toward understanding one another. Yes, there is terrorism today, but there are more efforts against violence and evil and terror than ever before in human history. Yes, racism still exists, but we have made progress and people of all races are continuing to initiate new efforts to reduce racial injustice. I bring good news to you today. The pathway to peace begins with the words, I'm sorry. To have peace with God, you must say, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry for not valuing my life or the lives of others as a gift from you. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for falling short of your dreams, your will for me. I'm sorry for not caring about other people through your compassion. I'm sorry for not loving mercy and doing justice. I'm sorry for not investing my life in your kingdom as revealed in Jesus. God, I'm sorry. In the 1960s, St. John said, we are sorry. We are sorry about segregated schools and the lack of opportunity provided for many children and youth in Charlotte. We are sorry for the ways in which society values some people more than other people. And we are not satisfied with it being this way, and we are going to work to improve this situation. In the 1970s, St. John said, We are sorry that God's calling in the lives of women has been valued less than God's calling in the lives of men, and we're not satisfied with it being this way, and we're going to invest our lives in improving this situation. Also in the 1970s, St. John said, We're sorry that we value our expression of the ordinance of baptism by immersion more than we value other expressions of baptism. So because we're not satisfied with this limiting practice, we're going to begin welcoming members who are baptized in all traditions. And in the decades, St. John's has also said, we're sorry in other ways. In recent decades, St. John's has been saying, we're sorry that LGBTQ persons and families are drawn outside the circle of Christ's church by many congregations, and we're not satisfied with this being the way it is. We're not satisfied with this practice. And so we're going to invest ourselves in welcoming every person who confesses Jesus as Lord of their faith in the congregational membership and leadership in St. John. Now, of course, our pursuit of peace has caused some to criticize us and some to reject us. We've been kicked out of everything, Baptist. <laughs> In fact, we finally had to send a letter. They kept kicking us out even though they'd already kicked us out. <laughs> I 
And so St. John's had to send a letter that said, if you will stop kicking us out of your organizations, we will continue to not send you money. <laughs> Our pursuit of peace has caused some to criticize us, some to reject us. But friends, some people choose to avoid dealing with their own inconsistency by shaming others. This year, as you pursue a pathway of peace with God and as you make your Christmas list, make a new list. This year, make a Christmas list that says, God, I am sorry for blank. And I'm going to make this relationship or this situation better by blank. And you may not completely solve terrorism or racial profiling, but you can experience more peace within your life as you say to God, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs>